Hey, welcome to Gold's Garage. And so, uh, the last series of videos I made, uh, actually Mike Kimball and I made 10 videos of his budget build 350. And if you want to make more than 350 horsepower for $1,600, uh, check out uh, the whole series of videos. We went through all the detail, parts procurement, right to the dyno test. And uh, in fact, I owe you one more video. We got to get it back here and do some diagnostics on it after the dyno, but Mike hasn't got it back here. So, so that was a budget build. Uh, this is the opposite of a budget build. Everything in this engine is brand new uh, uh, for, and for a street engine, high-end uh, parts, and, parts and equipment. And I actually started this back in the spring. And so there are, is some videos of some of the assembly, piston install and so on in previous videos. And I had to set it aside because I had other things to do. So I'm finally getting back to it. And I just got all the parts. So I'm ready to go. So uh, I'll start with the block upside down. It's a 509 block. So this is a four bolt main. Sorry, originally it was a two bolt main. But it's now got uh, aftermarket splayed caps with ARP studs. And all ARP fasteners on it. So it's been... Uh, Board 30 thou, square decked, and whenever you install aftermarket caps, you have to line board, of course. So it's been line board as well. So uh, the entire rotating assembly is Eagle rotating assembly. Uh, crankshaft and rods, of course, are all brand new. ARP rod bolts. Uh, the pistons are Keith Black pistons, Hyper Eutectic pistons, and we'll show them in a minute. Uh, it's a Melodon. Uh, Windy tray, and I even signed the bottom of it for somebody to find, who knows, a long time from now, hopefully. So uh, so that's the bottom end of it, the rotating assembly. We're going to spin it over and have a look at the top of it. Uh, once again, 509 block. So there's another version of it is the 511 block. This is the version with only two frost plugs. Uh, the 511, I actually did a 400 511 block in the spring, and it had three frost plugs. So along the way, I'll try to point out some little pointers that if you're going to do a build, you might uh, be helpful to know. And this is a pretty small point, but if you buy pipe plugs nowadays uh, on Amazon or something like that, that's probably where I bought these, the pipe plug thread is correct. It's a quarter uh, national pipe thread, but the hex in there where you put your Allen wrench is millimeters. So be, watch out for that because it can get you in trouble. Uh, brand new Melling M55 oil pump and pickup. Brand new, but it's a Melling stock. Not high volume pump. You do not need a high volume pump on a street motor. And uh, we'll prove that when we get it running. So let's look at the other side of it. So once again, the Bloxman board, 30 thou. Uh, yesterday, I double checked all the deck heights. So there's the deck heights marked. Average deck height is about nine thousandths of an inch uh, on the decks, and that's taken into account in the calculation for uh, static and dynamic compression. And let's talk about the other parts first. I have a spreadsheet list which we'll put a screenshot shot of for you in the video, so you can have a good look at all the parts that I'm using for this build, if you're interested. So the camshaft is uh, Howard's cam. The cam's already in it. It's a roller cam. And let me just point that out while I'm here because I can't remember the numbers. It's a Howard's 110265-10. It's 232.6 on the intake at 50 and 240.6 on the exhaust. 530, 545, and 110 uh, load separation angle. Uh, and I will be using GM Performance 1.6 rockers, not the 1.5. These are 1.5s here. I have both both here. I'll probably start it up on the 1.5s and then I'll put 1.6s. In fact, uh, this engine will be dynoed. I haven't got a dyno date yet. And we're going to do some experimenting. We'll make a dyno pull with 1.5 rockers. And then we'll put 1.6s on the intake. We'll make another pull. Then we'll put 1.6s on the exhaust and make another pull. And we might even take the 1.6s. No, back off the exhaust, and we're back to where we started. So, 
because sometimes you're better off not to have the bigger uh, lift on your exhaust valve. And there's a whole technical explanation for that, but I'll save that for now. So, so that's the camshaft. It is a roller cam, of course. Lenati uh, roller lifters, brand new Lenati. Everything in this engine is brand new. Lenati roller lifters. And the cylinder heads, uh, airflow research. Uh, cylinder heads, these are airflow research 200cc enforcers. And they're made for roller cams. Uh, 208 intake valves, 65 cc's, and they already have the steam holes for 400 blocks. So whenever you use any head on a 400 block for a street motor, you got to have the steam holes there. And often I've had to drill those holes after. I haven't ruined any heads yet, but it's a little bit, uh, a little bit nerve wracking job. These come with the holes already installed, already drilled. So it's nice to have that and I don't have to worry about it or think about it. It's also a roller, uh, heads are built for a roller cam engine and make a pointer here. If you're buying heads, make sure you know if you got a roller cam or a flat type of cam and buy your heads accordingly because heads for a roller cam typically have bigger valve springs and longer valves and to accommodate the roller cam and higher pressures. So higher forces on the spring or higher spring rate. So yesterday to validate that, these heads, I checked the combustion chamber volume with my burette and it checked out at 65 cc's like it's supposed to. Took a couple of valves off, measured the installed light 1.78, then put it on my spring tester and measured the forces. So I've got about 140 to 150 pounds of force when the valve is closed and about 360 pounds at 570 lift, which is my maximum lift because uh, 1.6 rockers, 570, 580 lift. And so I measured that all yesterday. So the springs are adequate for the roller cam. The combustion chambers are where it's supposed to be. I guess the point I'm making, when you buy anything, you need to validate that you got what you think you got. And we actually bought these heads from Skip White. They're sold through Skip White, I think only, uh, especially made for uh, 400 engines. So with that, I'm going to have about 11 to 1 compression static and dynamic compression 8.8 .8 or 8.7, as I recall. And that's going to give me, with leakage, because you always have some, probably 170 to 180 PSI max of uh, cylinder pressure. And that's easy to validate. All you need is a compression tester. Anybody can do that. The, your, the end result of all your calculations that you do is uh, compression pressure. So you should always validate that. We will do that when we get it on the engine test stand. We'll make subsequent videos of that. Uh, push rods, trick flow, chrome molly push rods, custom length 7.25 uh, for these heads. And I will also double check that. Um, what, and when I do the assembly, I have not degreed the cam. Yet, this, uh, I will be using a Cloy's adjustable timing gear with a thrust button, thrust bearing on it. Uh, when I do, this is just a mock-up cam. I have, do not have the vibration damper or pulley that I'm going to use. That's a Dorman, but I'm looking at, at other choices for, uh, for a balancer to uh, put on there. This is just a mock-up at this point. So I've covered the heads, the cam, intake manifold is an RPM air gap uh, intake manifold. And that's gonna go nicely with these heads. So uh, the way you make power is the brains of your engine is your camshaft, the compression is your muscle and your cylinder heads and intake manifold are your lungs. And so I think we got all those areas covered. Uh, not predicting the horsepower. We're going to find that out when we get to the dyno. So I think I've covered off most of the points. Let me go over them and we'll put a screenshot of this. There's the exact uh, part number or casting number for the block. Of course, a detailed blueprint rebuild with all the documentation. A binder goes with every engine with all the documentation. 
It's board 30 thou, splayed four bolt main caps, line honed and square decked, full eagle rotating assembly, Keith Black hyper eutectic pistons, chrome molly file fit rings, Moroso windage tray, melling fit, um, sorry, it's not Moroso, it's Milodon, so that's an error, but melling M55 oil pump, airflow research enforcer 200 CFM heads. There's your Howard's cam specs. Uh, the Nautic hydraulic roller lifters, trip flow push rods, uh, ARP or rocker arm studs uh, with adjustable guide plates, GM performance uh, rocker arms, and I will finish off with a 1.6. Uh, it will have a brand new 65,000 volt uh, just HEI distributor and silicon spark plug wires. The intake manifold I just showed you, the air gap manifold. And this engine will be dyno tested. I am building this engine on spec, so it will be for sale. And the price of the dyno is included in that. And if anybody is interested in it, you want to follow it along the way, you can come to the dyno with us and uh, see for yourself when we do that. So hope you found that interesting. I will be making subsequent videos as I get this engine finished, assembled, and uh, get it on my test stand and get it running and then we got to make a date with daryl for the dyno test and uh that'll be the final uh test of it so i forgot to ask you to like and subscribe so if you're still with me please do that uh we're just going to cross over 4,000 subscribers today so we are growing and trying to find uh, videos that you might find interesting and helpful and uh, display our work while we're doing it thanks for watching gold scratch